Hello my fellow pilots and citizens, and welcome to another episode of Star Citizen FM, episode 42. Star Citizen FM is your fan community source for anything related to Star Citizen, the community, or the verse. Star Citizen FM is hosted by yours truly, Dr. Hawk. So join us on this very special episode, the 42nd episode of Star Citizen FM. So I would like to start off the first part of this episode with something a little different. I don't really like to show you guys real life, you know, clips and things from my life as I find that slightly immersion breaking and Dr. Hawk, you know, has, takes part in the Star Citizen universe. But I'd like to highlight something that I found pretty unique and I actually thank you guys for. We recently reached 23 million dollars. Now, if you guys remember, I previously said that I would enjoy a glass of scotch once we reached that. Plus, you guys were not too happy with the whole mix-up. One of you, who goes by the name of Odd God, just so happened was nice enough to donate a nice 10-year bottle of a blur. So, in celebration of Star Citizen reaching its $23 million optimally funded goal, I think it's only appropriate that we crack this right now. So, to Chris Roberts and everyone over at CIG, if I could actually get this damn thing open, <laughs> I would like to propose a toast. Congratulations for reaching $23 million. Congratulations for bringing us along for the ride so far. And yes, this is my Blue Horizon mug that was donated by Blue Horizon when I was at Austin, Texas. And congratulations to the fans, everyone else. Here is to another year of Star Citizen Awesomeness. And thank you, Odd God, for the scotch. Oh, that is actually quite nice. I like that. Great selection. So, congratulations to everyone. Congratulations, Star Citizens. And congratulations, Cloud Imperium. Here is to another year of Star Citizen. So now that I'm properly intoxicated for you viewers, I think it's only appropriate that we go over some of the news in the Star Citizen universe. Wingman's Hangar had his 42nd episode, and with it came a slew of new knowledge and things that we could find out about Star Citizen. I would highly encourage you guys to go over and check out this link right now, and watch the 42nd episode of Wingman's Hangar. In it, he answers quite a bit of fan and questions, goes over a few things related to Star Citizen, as well as a high focus on Squadron 42. To any of you that are familiar with the live stream, a few particular members from Wing Commander lore have actually jumped back on to help Chris Roberts with the Squadron 42 storyline, which I will be jumping to in the next article. For now, let us focus on our milestone, $23 million in funding. With the $23 million goal reached, we have unlocked the Xan Scout Ship. The Carto is a light attack craft in the Xian military. Contrary to human ship design, the Carto doesn't have a traditional main thruster, instead featuring an array of maneuvering thrusters on articulated rigs. This design allows for incredible agility, making them the bane of UEE pilots, who bestowed the nickname Quark because when all the thrusters are firing, the ship looks like a spark flying through space. The Xian Apioa Corporation also manufactures an export model, the Car 2 Al, for sale to human civilians as a dedicated scout explorer. The export model features the same Xian maneuvering rig, but control surfaces modeled for human use, and a more limited armament. As a special award for those who have backed us up to this point, you will be receiving a model of the Car 2 to display in your hangar. It won't be ready immediately, as we now have to concept the ship, but as always, we will be keeping you informed about that process. So with this, we now have a $25 million stretch goal, the Enhanced Alpha, unlocked at $25 million. We will use additional funding to build a wider Alpha test than we had originally intended for the first phase of Star Citizen's launch. The initial plan was to first launch servers in North America and then expand to areas such as Europe and Australia to decrease latency in these areas, perfecting the game as we improve the experience around the world. This funding will now allow us to invest in a wider infrastructure for our early testing, spinning up remote servers earlier. 
Hitting this goal will also allow us to increase the number of remaining alpha slots. Extra alpha slots not only means more Stardust citizens will travel the verse at launch, but we will also be able to receive more feedback and more stress testing. This in turn will allow us to better balance and enhance the Star Citizen experience. And knowing that this community is quite amazing unto itself, I have no doubt that you guys will shell out another 2 million for the enhanced alpha. So be sure to check out the Letter of the Chairman article, you can find that in the description of the video below, or you can all find it in the description in the forum when I post this video. The next article on the list is actually the Fan Spotlight. Some of you guys have been doing a lot of work and some quite amazing work when it comes to Star Citizen. Perhaps maybe you want a tracked Grey Cat PTV, have an interesting story to tell, or just took Star Citizen and turned it into your own cinematic masterpiece. All of these people, iPearl, Anything FPS, and Tim Skidgewalker, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, have been making some amazing videos when it comes to Star Citizen. Be sure to click the links below and check out their videos. In fact, in Wingman's Hangar, Cloud Imperium Games has actually reached out to Anything FPS for a potential job offer. So Anything FPS, if you're listening to this, good on you, buddy. Slow golf clap. Hopefully we'll be seeing anything FPFs in the Cloud Imperium offices in the foreseeable future. As I had mentioned, there is a new episode of Wingman's Hangar. Uh, and as I've mentioned before, I'm trying to stray away from focusing on Wingman's Hangar as he is the star of his own show. But given that this is a very special episode and contains quite a lot of information pertaining to Squadron 42, as well as a lot of fan-focused questions... I highly advise that you guys check it out. You can find it in the description below, and you can watch it. There is also a little tidbit featuring some of the fans submitted congratulations for Wingman's Hangar for reaching 42 episodes, and for the first anniversary of Star Citizen. However, if that's not your fancy, there is also a newly released Jump Point article for anyone that was not a subscriber for the UEE Marine and Rifle Work in Progress. This is an article that was first released to subscribers, but is now available for anyone who is not a subscriber. You can both download the pictures in high resolution quality, or just check them out in the article below in the description. Be sure to check them out to know exactly what kind of death dealing weaponry and badass it looks you will be able to use in Star Citizen, or rather see other people, such as the UEE citizens that will be patrolling and looking for you when you're trying to smuggle drugs into Terra. One of the other highlights released on the comlink is Star Citizen mouse pads. If you two wanted your own 36 by to almost 12 inch mouse pad, you can order them from the Star Citizen store. They will run you about $35 and they cover shipping anywhere in the world. Production will begin as quickly as possible with an eye getting them towards you for the holidays. So if you'd like to start making your orders for your Constellation 300i or Hornet mousepad, you can do so at the following link in the description. I think I might personally order one of these, as I myself do not have much in the way of Star Citizen physical merchandise, and it would be nice to start having something that reflected my interest in this game. One final article that was released that was of particular note was the Aurora brochure. So to those of you that were familiar with the live stream and the reveal of the Aurora commercial, now you too can customize your very own coffin. If you'd like just a little bit of extra storage space with your Aurora, or just a little bit of extra guns, your coffin can be configured to your very own specifications. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I, I could not help but laugh a little during that commercial with the Aurora, and then seeing the following Hornet commercial, and watching the Aurora try to kill a Hornet. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just not seeing it right. <laughs> Yet again, if you'd like to check this out and configure your very own Aurora and purchase your own, you can do so at the following link. I do highly recommend you check out the Aurora. It's a very nifty little ship and quite possibly might be one of the staples in the Star Citizen universe when we see the dogfighting and eventual universe come around. Being that it features a very modular design as well as a very quick accessibility and apparently high turnover rate for insurance claims, this could be your go-to ship if your constellation gets blown out of the sky. 
There's quite a few little interesting notes relating the Aurora, and you can check them out in the PDF yourself. As said, high turnover rate. For the third year in a row, RSI Auroras have topped every insurance provider's list as the fastest turnaround for replacement claims. In 2943, the line of Auroras have recently been named as the best starter ship by Whitley's Guide. Also being able to carry five tons of cargo, as well as establishing your own very own presence with a class three hardpoint and four class one weapons. Despite my jokes, this ship might actually be a great ship for both beginners as well as expert pilots. So we will see what the Aurora can offer come the dogfighting module. Until then, I'll see you in Star Citizen with your Aurora while I fly around my 350R trying to run away from you all. You crazy people shooting everyone. That pretty much wraps up what I had intended to go over for this week's episode of Star Citizen FM. As mentioned, there is a lot to go over. By no means am I saying that is there not anything to go over. There is. I highly encourage you guys to watch Wingman's Hangar episode 42 and take a perusing through the Star Citizen com link. My episodes are fairly short as of late because now we have electricians part carpenters in my basement, so that's kind of, I have to get out of the way every now and then, I don't know if you guys actually hear the drills. Point aside, I do want to finish off with one final interview with a clan. Now normally I remember mentioning in the past I didn't want to do clan spotlights and highlights as I felt it would cause problems, but as of lately I've been really thinking that, what problems? If I could highlight and spotlight all of the individual clans and people out there, I think it would actually be a great idea, as that way we could get some of you guys noticed and maybe even playing with other star citizens. So without further ado, let us join Phantom Regiment with Shadow and Mirko. Hi there, I'm Mirko and I am the leader of the Phantom Regiment. Welcome to the show, pleasure to have you here Marco. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Who else have we got here today? I am Shadow, um, an officer in training, and part of the uh, press corps. Welcome and to I, show. I am Crow, leader of the press corps. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure to have you guys on the show. Thank you for stopping by to talk to the Hawk a little bit. So, you guys had initially come to me with an interest in spreading out the word of Phantom Regiment, but maybe you guys can tell the viewers a little bit about yourselves first. Yeah, sure, Hawk. Uh, no problem. Uh, for me, a as a gamer, I mean, I've, I've always enjoyed like having that more open-based uh, platform. And I came from Freelancer years ago when that was more alive. And I enjoyed it very uh, much so. Uh, you know, I've gone across the board with different types of games as well, uh, from FPS, MMO, RTS, so on and so forth. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to Star Citizen because I feel that Chris Roberts is very serious about having a more open development policy. They want the feedback from the players. Not only that, but the way that they are creating this game is it's more complex and is able to feature a lot more than what games could 10 years ago when he released uh, Freelancer. Very true. It Sorry? I said very true. Yes, and there, I mean, there's a number of things that I'm looking forward to within this game. Um, I'm guessing my favorite thing to try out once the game actually comes out would be the live boarding action. I mean, it's not really something that you would ever really see or hear about from any other game. Okay, so do, would you plan to have specific raiding parties within your clan to do this with, or is this just something of a personal interest you have yourself in? It's more of a personal interest to go in and try it out and just see how well it actually works. Uh, as far as the clan would go, I would have a party set up, but it wouldn't be something that would, we would be committed to. Because uh, that wouldn't really fall within our play style, not to say that we wouldn't ever do it, but it just wouldn't be a more commonplace thing. Yeah, I remember when the boarding action was brought up, I immediately, immediately had envisioned that Star Wars scene of the Stormtroopers and Darth Vader breaking onto the blockade runner, slaughtering the poor rebels. Who knows how it'll be in Star yeah. Citizen. Yeah, I kind of pictured the, uh, the same thing myself. 
myself. Like I said, it's, you know, I can't wait to see it. I mean, I really, really want to be able to see how far well it's going to, uh, to work out within the game mechanics. Any other interests that you gentlemen have? What about you, Shadow or Crow? Either one of you? Um, interests? Well, I'm interested in the actual space flight part of it, seeing though I really like space sims. Alright, what kind of space sims have you played? Or find an interest in? I imagine Freelancer is among them. Actually, I got into computer games a bit after Freelancer kind of went away, and I didn't exactly get to join in on, on all the fun. But I taken an interest in this game after I learned about it from one, from one of my friends. Fledged back in April and joined Phantom Regiment three weeks back. Very nice. What did you pledge for? Constellation. <laughs> nice. I've been slowly collecting ships. Alright, what about you, Crow? I absolutely love options and chaos and open world exploration. Quite frankly, I don't like being told what to do. Okay, and so you're probably a Grand Theft Auto slash Just Cause 2 fan in that kind I of open world freedom. I absolutely love GTA, <laughs> uh, without a doubt. It took half of our clan away from me for several weeks when it was released, <laughs> which, which was a mixed blessing. Uh, but they all came back psyched and ready to murder and speaking... In, uh, in a different accent than I was used to hearing from them for a little while. <laughs> but uh, what I'm most looking forward to about Star Citizen is the fact that, first off, they don't force you to do anything. And Chris Roberts and all his staff seem to be pushing really, really hard to make sure that there is no one way to be the best at this game. And they're talking about both adding and removing content, which is something we've never seen before, having story arcs that evolve consistently and that so when you start out everybody doesn't do exactly the same thing and all the same quests and same quest lines aren't available and uh, what the players do is going to have a meaningful impact on what happens being able to name systems being able to affect the uh, world as a whole and really affect other players gameplay with an actual punishment that's severe enough that you notice it but not severe enough that it's going to scare too many gamers away that availability of options with the boarding actions, stealing ships, all of it, just all the chaos really speaks to an organization that's attentive to its members being able to accomplish almost anything, and that's what thrills me about Star Citizen. Very nice. So you guys seem very tight-knit, you have your interest in Star Citizen. What exactly does you know, Phantom Regiment have to do with this? Like, What would any potential Star Citizen out there who is looking for a potential clan to join find different about Phantom Regiment from any other clan out there? I feel like the Phantom Regiment is a relatively unique organization in that we try our best not to force players into a particular game style or event. We have our websites open, our forums are open, participation is not required. We maintain our voice chat systems. Um, but when it comes to a specific style of gameplay, we try to let players do whatever they want so long as it doesn't detract from the experience of other gamers in the clan. So if something you do affects our reputation, we make a rule against it. If it starts affecting the organization as a whole, but if it doesn't, then we just try and find people who like to do the same thing that you do. So if you are a trader and freelancer, we'll recruit actively other people who enjoy running trade runs with you and pull some fighters out and get them to run escorts with you. Just try and make sure that the gamers that enjoy specific things play together. And what we push is the community aspect. I don't care if you're the worst gold farmer on the planet, or if you're the worst shot in the galaxy. So long as you have a positive attitude and you get along with our members, then we will let you continue to try to be absolutely terrible at everything you've got. <laughs> So long as you're enjoying it and you're not detracting from the experience of the rest of the organization, and if you do anything that affects the team, as far as emotional dynamics are concerned, social dynamics, me or Mirko or one of the other officers will pull you aside and have a conversation with you about it. And we take complaints about attitude very seriously, and we work really, really hard to make sure that the uh, community stays positive. Very nice. Do you have anything to add on this, Marco? It's pretty much like Crow had said. I mean, 
mean, we like to be a little bit more open based. Uh, with me, I mean, the first thing that I would do within the game would be uh, like the combat first. That's kind of our thing that we've taken from Freelancer. Uh, that's the biggest thing that's got, gotten us into sources. I mean, for all the world come from Freelancer, we had PR set up before. Um, the second thing would be trade, because we would have to be able to provide for ourselves. So that's our two biggest aspects, but we do you know, have elements of uh, other options, such as exploration, mercenary, uh, you know, etc. I mean, I've got all that stuff listed up on the forums if anyone is curious to check it out, but aside from that, uh, it's like he said, I mean, I'm personally looking for people with good attitudes that want to be part of a, uh, a team that help each other out, and, you know, it's nothing that says we can't get a little raw or whatever, but I mean, as long as it doesn't take away from anyone else, I mean, that, that's fine, I mean, uh, people are going to have bad days, of course, so, you know, we're not going to paint them up against the wall for that. Uh, but aside from that, I don't really have much to say. So what do you what do you guys have, and like, what do you wish for from Star Citizen, or do you, is everything that you guys have seen so far, you know, adamant to your expectations, are you sitting there bouncing on your seat? Or is Black Regiment pretty much ready to go as soon as the game ships? Banner Regiment Gaming. And I'm, uh... We're ready to go. I'm skeptical about the, uh... Full features of the game being ready to go and being maintained throughout the lifespan of the game without a pay-to-play system. If they can really deliver everything that Chris Roberts has promised us, and if anyone can, I feel like Robert Space Industries as the organization is going to be able to. Um, but I am uh, moving forward as if I have no reservations, despite the fact that I do. We're going to be ready to deploy. We've got fleets set up. We've got officers ready. Um, and the alpha and beta testing are only going to help us come together even more and hopefully meet new players that are looking for an organization like ours. Very nice. Do you guys have anything specific in mind for training? Are you using any other games, or is it more just wait and see till the dogfighting comes out? Mostly a lot of see. it is just kind of wait and see until the, the dog fighting alpha comes on out. Uh, you know, I've got a number of ships ready to go myself. I mean, I've, I mean, even if we get in people that only have something like an Aurora LX, I mean, that will be fine because I've got a number of ships uh, ready to go myself between combat and trading. That, you know, one of the things that's incorporated with the game is that other players can use your ships. So that's always uh, a plus, and even if not, we can hire an NPC season. But I'm, I would much more prefer to have players using them. So I wanted to bring up one, bring little, up one point, little point, and I'm echoing, so some, oh, I think we're good now. I wanted to bring up one little point. You said you have multiple ships. I'm assuming you possibly might have a wife. Do they know about how much you've spent on Star Citizen or family members? <laughs> I am not currently married. I do not have a girlfriend. Oh, then you are quite right lucky. Now. Yeah, I'm one of the <laughs> lucky few. I, I've seen multiple posts on the forums about my wife or girlfriend just found it. How much I've spent on the game. Yeah, I love that little tracker they have in the store that shows you how much you have spent to date on Star Citizen. I think I looked at it and I'm like, oh wow, that's more than I've spent on any other game in my life. Yep. And I'm happy to have done it. What about you, Shadow? You're relatively new. Has Phantom Regiment Gaming lived up to your expectations? Is it everything you could have wished it to be? Well, they didn't break up and kick me out, so I'd say <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, I guess that's always good to hear. So, if you guys had one final pitch that you wanted to say to any anybody that would be listening on why they should join Phantom Regiment Gaming, and I know you've already established what you guys do, but if you guys had to come up with, you know, the famous 10-second elevator pitch that would set you apart from everyone else, what would that be? I'll let you guys figure out who you want to say that. I, uh, I can do it if you want, Marco. Go for it. 10-second elevator pitch. I hated those when I was in public presentations. Well, they're good. They show you your creativity. Yep. If uh, if you are looking for a clan that cares about you as a gamer and doesn't just care about the organization's stats and wants to help you excel, become the best you can, and get the most you can, both out of performance and enjoyment in your gaming scenario, you want to join us because we have spent our entire lives learning how to make gamers like you happy. Very nice. I think I'll order three. <laughs> I'm sorry. There can be only one. There can be only one. 
Well, I'd like to thank you guys for taking a little opportunity to chat with me. Uh, to anyone out there that's watching the show, you can find Phantom Regiment Gaming in the description below or on the forum post when I post this video. I'd like to thank you guys for taking the opportunity to chat so you can take your opportunity to say goodbye to the viewers or add any final messages and we will be on our way. Well, thank you, Dr. Hawk. I appreciate being on the show today. Uh, all I can say to you guys is we can't wait for the game to come out and I'll see you in the verse. Shadow or Crow, do you guys have any final salutations? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think the game's going to be fun and I'll uh, see you guys there. Crow? In space. Sounds good. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to click the little hawk on the lower left hand corner to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. As always, you can always like or leave your own feedback in the comments section below. I appreciate the comments and it helps me improve the show. So until next time, you guys take care and fly safe. This is Dr. Hawk and Phantom Regiment Gaming, signing off.